our esteemed panelists, a great combination of expertise and experience. Um, as we've heard, as Steve was alluding to, um, the, the transaction activity seems promising. And actually, an HBS study showed that the first half of this year had a 34% 34, 34 increase over the first six months of 2010 in terms of transactions. Um, panelists, this sounds very promising, but a major concern that still keeps coming up during regional conferences around the country is the lack of available capital. Can you comment on the challenge that you are seeing in gaming finance? Anyone, I'm just going to throw it out there. I can start with that. We've been hearing that all day about the challenges. I think uh, it's been summarized earlier by all the panelists and uh, everyone who's landing here <coughs> is that uh, the only available uh, funds or, or capital that is out there is uh, the SBA and in the smaller and then higher, <coughs> our higher brands. You know, just at the lodging conference, if you look at uh, everyone who was there was landing, you go and sit with them. The only three projects that uh, they will land on is the Hilton Marriott's and IG or maybe Star Wars. So if you have anything else, uh, then the options are five or four. The other option is I think uh, USDA is also is the option uh, that is a viable option that is out there. Uh, the challenge I think is for the, the smaller hoteliers. What we've been hearing uh, is from the smaller uh, hoteliers, the mid uh, and the lower economy segment uh, hotels, especially with the HOA, with the members and stuff, a lot of them are in that category. And uh, uh, rather than uh, you know talking about challenges, I think the, the solution to it and ones that we've been talking about is maybe as industry as a whole can look into it is uh, the immediate availability, uh, the, the way the FDIC is working because the hotel industry has been categorized as a commercial real estate, uh, we are in the, in the box where uh, the FDIC is scrutinizing these assets and if uh, we were there just a week ago with some of the hoteliers and, and the bankers up on the, on the hill, and uh, if it gets reclassified, and we had a talk with FDIC about it, is that if the, the hotels, uh, the assets under certain rooms, you know, maybe 100, 150, if it gets recategorized as uh, owner-occupied, just like a lot of the other assets are, the funding uh, comes available uh, real fast. And I think a lot of bankers can, uh, can uh, 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 vouch for that, but that's something it's the reclassification is what, if we work it, then uh, the funding can come back faster. Good point, Alkesh. Thank you. Any other comments? Sure. Jay? Um, I think if you take a macro perspective, there's a lot of fundamentals that don't warrant uh, any near-term return of available capital. Uh, you know, you look at unemployment of 10, 11%, 14% in some sub-markets, you know, High unemployment, uh, there's no pressure on wages and prices. There's no inflation. When there's no inflation, there's low rates. So there's been a big monetary stimulus, but where is all this money gone? It hasn't gone to the lodging sector, at least on some of these smaller transactions, deals 10 million and under. There is the SBA program, but again, lenders' boxes are pretty stringent on that front. T alluded to the CMBS sector. Again, rating agencies have scrutinized those lenders where Marriott and Hilton's are generally the only flags that are getting done. Um, and the REITs, you know, the capital markets, there's been a lot of volatility with rates, LIBOR, et cetera. They're also on the sidelines, and they were at the beginning of the year flush with cash. Uh, there's a lot of money out there. You're seeing a lot of mortgage REITs pop up. It's more 8 to 12% money, um, which affects your, your pricing on some of these assets. You have a higher cost of capital, you, you can't bid as aggressively. So valuations I don't think are gonna return until liquidity comes back into the market. And that's probably not, in my view, three to four years away. Can I add one thing? Uh, when uh, we were up in Washington, DC, um, about a week ago, one of the things that actually loosened up credit, um, and, and probably a lot of lenders here saw that last year, was when uh, we had the 90% guarantee on, uh, on the SBA loan <coughs> and the waiver of uh, the fees involved. And that was one of the things that we brought up to our senators and congressmen when we were up there meeting with them is that we need that back again to stimulate, I guess, really the, uh, the lending side of things. And we hope something like that happens again. 
On the uh, larger full service deals, they are uh, finding funding, but they are it, it, the gap is widening between the more difficult deals and the the um, performing assets. So if they're performing in their major brands, they're actually calling and being very aggressive to offer opportunities. But if it's a distressed asset that's not performing, uh, it's difficult. Then, then they're begging for funding. So it's difficult in that regard. If you do have a unique situation where we, the, the development is obviously extremely limited, but if you are building something that's uniquely qualified in an urban location with uh, local and state and federal incentives and well capitalized by a, there is some, there is some unique uh, funding out there that's different than traditional funding. Like for the historic types of properties, Correct. all of that yeah, would fall under some of that. You know, if there's a, it really comes down to how compelling the deal is. And if the deal is strong enough to weather these really difficult times and still make money, I mean cash, not, not percentages, but real cash, then there's, then there's people who want to invest in that. Are, are buyers and sellers starting to see more eye to eye, or is there still just a large gap in pricing? What are you experiencing, Helen? Um, what we've been seeing is exactly what Tegan had said. Um, I think there's a couple things. Uh, our transaction volume has uh, pretty much gone from pretty much nothing, I guess, in 2009 and 10. But this year, uh, we're seeing that uh, we're back to what we were selling in 07, about 55 to 60 hotels a year. Um, so I think that's where uh, we also, the reason we're seeing that is because the, um, the, the pricing gap is starting to narrow. I did actually uh, look up some statistics on that as well, on the ask versus sale price. And, and things are starting to narrow. Um, I think 09 was probably uh, the, the biggest uh, area where transactions were low and, and the gap was high. But now we are seeing that uh, starting to come together. And I think a lot of it is because of motivated sellers. Okay. Yeah, agreed. I think it depends who the seller is and the level of motivation. Um, you know, you've got failed banks and their, their receivers who are in a capacity to unload, file a proof of claim under a lost share and collect a check as opposed to possibly working out a loan. You know, that, that's one anomaly. Uh, you've got a lot of servicers that are overstaffed. I know uh, I have a buddy at LNR who their asset managers, LNR's corporate downgrading got downgraded because they have too many problem loans to asset manager ratio. They're just overworked. And they have a protocol, you know, if they can afford a hit, you know, just take it, pass it through the bond holders and move on. Um, those are motivated sellers. But if it's a guy with a sub-performing property who may just need a forbearance agreement with his lender, he's not going to get to the pricing that an investor with a 20 plus IRR is going to want. This is a, a bit of a situational question, but certainly is a realistic situation. The asset you just bought has a long-term management and franchise agreement that you want to change. What would you suggest to someone in a situation like this? Paul, you want to jump in? Yes. Yeah. I would take the friendly route. I mean, you negotiate with the counterparty on each of those contracts, if it's a management company or franchise or, but ultimately, if that precludes you from restructuring your property, you know, bankruptcy is always an option. It's an executory contract. You can refuse it and, you know, let the judge figure it out. But. Right. I, I agree with the first part, too, of that is, is, is it's not always, um, it's the relationship, building that relationship and having the contacts and the understanding of what your end, end is in mind or your end in mind is so that you can, the, the brand may have an opportunity and a desire to change as well. Um, so they're certainly not going to walk away from money that they, they're entitled to, but they'll be willing to negotiate with you. Are you using any additional tools that, uh, in, in terms of market reports, that maybe these are new to the, the toolbox that you have of resources? or how, how are you trying to get your arms around what's going on with a, a still very volatile situation? Anyone like to jump in? Paul, do you want to? I think that's a great question because so often we see um, people analyzing the, the future of the, the hotel and that is important, but I think what Teague said earlier about now is very important. What is, what is the property actually doing now? What are the legal costs now? What are your circumstances now? 
if it's an old asset getting worse, even if you did a renovation, then you have a renovated old asset. Um, and you may have a low barrier to entry in the market. And there's, there's several products. There's, there's a lot more brands of today than there were just five years ago. And, and there's a lot of passion to want to do some new things. So it, if you're faced with a unique situation, I, I would take a, a real hard look at the reports and the understanding of what you have that you know to be fact and true. And the, um, the projections are important and they're, but make sure that they're, they're based on the fundamentals, not on hyperbole. So don't rely totally on the crystal ball. Right. <laughs> if I can add to that too. Yeah. Um, I think what we're seeing on, also on the transaction side is that we really have to, to get um, sellers realistic. And we look at the current numbers, what are they doing on the trailing 12, what's the market doing, how's the star report look, uh, what kind of FIP is gonna be involved for a buyer. And those are the most important things, um, and not the pro forma. Oh, what happens if I do this, and what happens if I do that? Oh, you can do this with it. That's out the door. Uh, we do look at what's sold and where the pricing is in the market, but we also have to look at that specific asset, and that's the most important part of our evaluation today. Good We've talked about a lot of challenges today throughout this afternoon. Are there any for hotel owners that we haven't hit on or that you would particularly want to emphasize? in terms of where we are you know, here in Hosto, entering October 2011. Anything that you think that we didn't amplify enough in terms of challenges for hotel owners? I would say that you know, you, this is some scary times in many respects, but I'm, I'm more of the optimistic one. I, I believe that this is a dip. I don't believe we're in this uh, for the short term. I, I think this is a great industry. I think that this is an industry that when we go to hotels, and we go to a lot of hotels, if it's well-branded, and, and well-branded doesn't mean just Marriott and Hilton, it means the right brand for the right product in the right location, and it is well-run, and, and the people who are on it and in it, involved in it, do the right things, you can make money. You can make a good living in this industry. You can do well. Um, I think a lot of our problems came from people who you know, wanted to buy things with someone else's money, over leverage it, not do anything, any really put any value or any interest in it, and just try to get in for the quick buck and get out. I think that those are the deals that caused a lot of our problems. And, but the actual solid, sincere hotelier who is involved and, and knows how to buy right, like uh, Harry does and some of the others, that if you buy right and you manage well, you can really do well in this industry. So I'm, I'm a little more of the optimistic. I wouldn't be such a defeatist. Um, that's not to say that everyone's strategy should be based on their own individual portfolio and situation. If, if it's right for some to hold, it may be right for some to buy. This could be some of the greatest buys that you'll ever see in the future. So it could be a really good opportunity for a lot of people. I can add to that as well. Um, one of the things that I'm finding on uh, the lending side is that a lot of lenders, uh, I think we're seeing SBA uh, seems to be the one source that's out there, uh, USDA of course as well, um, and then cash. Uh, but I think if, if we can uh, really get lenders to understand that this is a great time uh, to actually find opportunities out there, yeah, it's not the perfect Hampton, it's not the perfect location, it's not the perfect numbers, but that's where they're buying that price that uh, really makes a lot of sense for people to go in there and bring it up to where uh, it's, it's been historically. And I think that's where if it gets the loosening up of, of credit, I think that's going to make the biggest difference and, and so that a lot of owners um, get out of the situation they're in. Well, from the owner's perspective, I think um, the, the, the hotel owners who, start, who did not grow strategically are the one who are, are more in trouble and for the private lenders who are out there, you know, it's the best time for you to, uh, you know, find a right flag and uh, you know, park your money because I think a lot of the owners, they have been in these assets for a long time. Uh, they're they're looking for it. I think franchisors are, are definitely has been waiting long enough where you're going to see a lot of pips coming up. And with the funding uh, not available, or if, if anyone anyone has used single owner or, or a couple of hotel owners who has already used SB and whatever sources out there. Uh, the only uh, thing that they have is uh, to look for private uh, money. So, uh, I mean, it, it's a good opportunity for the, the private money to 
uh, invest in a good brand and, and find the right uh, ownership you know, to uh, you know, get good returns on, on their money. You know. sure. Yeah, no, I agree. I just one of the things to touch on, uh, Paul, I would agree with you. I don't think we're at that inflection point yet. I think this winter is going to be pretty uh, rough if it's year over year looking at this summer, which <coughs> wasn't on part of last summer. Uh, there's going to be a lot of money to be made, as Paul said, but more the arbitrage is going to be in some of these fractured deals where it require a significant pip, you know, up flag it. That's where the real money is going to be made with the lack of supply. You know, maybe three years out, you'll have some pricing power. Right now, I don't think Atlanta is a market where you can really raise your rate and get away with it. Um, but, you know, there will be money made. It's a great industry. So I think that's that. I'm aware of our time constraints. There's such expertise up here that I want you to be able to tap into it. Questions from the audience, please. Free advice. Well, join me, please, in thanking a wonderful panel, and thank you for your <laughs>